What is a stroke and why does it happen? Approximately 15 million people worldwide suffer from a stroke every year and it is a leading cause of mortality globally. A stroke is the result of a sudden interruption of blood flow to the brain which deprives the affected tissue of adequate oxygen and nutrients which are required for normal function. Left untreated, this results in permanent damage and can cause death. A stroke is classified as either hemorrhagic or ischemic. While hemorrhagic strokes have a higher fatality rate, ischemic strokes are far more common, accounting for 87% of all stroke cases. Ischemia translates to stopping blood flow, with the primary cause of an ischemic stroke being the rupture of an atherosclerotic plaque from the interior wall of an artery. The formation of these plaques is progressive and occurs over decades, initiated by a disruption to the inner lining of the arterial wall commonly caused by high blood pressure. This process is known as atherosclerosis. An injury to the artery structure allows a class of cholesterol molecules known as low-density lipoproteins, or LDLs, to move from the blood into the compromised vessel wall. As time progresses, the concentration of LDLs builds and the body's inflammatory response is triggered. Over time, the inflammatory white blood cells stimulate the underlying smooth muscle cell layer of the artery to proliferate and release calcium, which hardens the accumulating LDL layer, resulting in a large, solid plaque embedded in the artery's wall. The vessel stiffens, which elevates blood pressure even further. Simultaneously, the lumen of the artery narrows due to the bulge of the plaque extending inward therefore reducing oxygen and nutrient-rich blood from reaching target tissues. Eventually, additional damage to the vessel lining causes the resident plaque to rupture. The content of the plaque leaks across the vessel lumen and forms a blood clot, which inhibits normal blood flow. A thrombotic ischemic stroke is the development of a blood clot within a diseased blood vessel of the brain. However, clots formed in the peripheral blood vessels can also trigger a stroke. Debris from an atherosclerotic rupture that has occurred within the heart or lungs may be transported by the blood into the brain and become lodged within a healthy, narrow cerebral artery. This is known as an embolic ischemic stroke. While both can cause life-threatening damage to the brain, this video will focus on the potential effects of an embolic clot. The middle cerebral artery, or MCA, is one of the three main paired cerebral arteries in the brain and is most frequently involved in ischemic strokes. It's a direct branch of the internal carotid artery and supplies the lateral portions of the left and right cerebral hemispheres with oxygenated blood. The MCA can be subdivided into four segments. The M1 sphenoidal segment, the M2 insular segment, the M3 opercular segment, and finally the M4 cortical segment. The diameter of the MCA reduces as it moves along its course, with each segment narrower in size than the previous as a result of artery branching. An obstruction within the MCA in any one of these subsections will substantially impact the body's ability to function as the lateral brain is starved of oxygen. The first segment, M1, is the most proximal segment of the MCA. It runs horizontally across the cerebral hemispheres, giving rise to the ventriculostriate arteries. It's these small arteries that supply the brain's basal ganglia and internal capsule, structures critically involved in motor movements. An embolic clot risks becoming lodged within a ventriculostriate artery, especially if it is small in size. In such cases, blood moving within the M1 division will still continue to flow with ease across the trunk of the MCA vessel to supply distal portions of the brain. However, Symptoms such as paralysis of voluntary muscles will be encountered. Patients will also be faced by cortical defects as the damage caused by the ventriculostriate infarct progresses. Left ventriculostriate infarct will result in language impairment, or aphasia, while a clot obstruction in the right ventriculostriate arteries will induce left spatial neglect, where patients are unaware of objects on their left side. In contrast, 
Large embolic clots that become wedged along the M1 segment of the MCA leads to the most severe symptoms of an MCA stroke, as oxygenated blood is prevented from traveling the remainder of the MCA's course. If the clot remains mobile, it'll continue to migrate along the route of the MCA as pumping blood forces it forward. The M2 segment arises from the end of the M1 segment, distal to the last lentriculostriate artery. It divides into a superior and inferior division as it extends past the insula, with this bifurcation diverging the blood flow into two individual routes. As the size of the arteries decreases, the probability of an embolic blockage increases. In over 30% of cases, patients will experience a mini-stroke, or transient ischemic stroke, prior to the major ischemic event, as blood supply to the brain is temporarily inhibited. These restrictions are always short-lived, and permanent damage isn't seen. In such cases, momentary blockage by a clot along the path of the MCA may be the cause. Not all patients will experience obvious symptoms, and, at times, this event may even go undetected. In the instance that the clot becomes wedged within the M2 segment, the symptom seen will depend on the division that's obstructed. While an early M2 blockage will prevent blood flow into both the superior and inferior divisions, a singular impediment of only one of the divisions will allow the blood to continue to pass through the unaffected vessel. An embolic obstruction in the superior vessel can result in patients suffering from contralateral motor paralysis and experiencing sensory loss. However, additional auditory defects may be prevented as perfusion to the brain's primary auditory cortex is maintained by a continuous blood supply through the inferior M2 vessel. Symptoms of stroke also differ depending on the side of the occlusion. Global aphasia, the most severe language disorder induced by stroke, is symptomatic of patients experiencing a left brain M2 infarct in the region responsible for receptive and expressive language. Yet individuals subjected to a right infarct will still retain the ability to express themselves through verbal communication. This is because, while the left and right cerebral hemispheres may appear identical in appearance, both house distinctive neuronal pathways that uphold different operational features of the body. As the M2 segments advance, their perforating branches irrigate areas of the insula. The insula is often referred to as the fifth hidden lobe of the brain, as its structure remains concealed in the folds of the cerebral cortex. It's connected to the brain's emotion and memory center, and the loss of sufficient blood supply to this region can cause emotional problems such as a loss of empathy. The insula's function is vast, with an M2 embolic obstruction leading to the inability to taste and or sense pain. At the site of the circular sulcus of the insula, the M3 arteries arise from the respective divisions of the M2 segment. The M3 segments travel externally through the insula into the surface of the cerebral cortex, passing onto the lateral surface of the temporal and parietal lobes. At the end of the sylvian fissure, the M3 branches end and the final segment, M4, rises. The M4 branches course over the distal cortical surfaces of the lateral hemispheres, reaching the frontal and occipital lobes before terminating. The exact extent of damage is not universal in any M3-M4 infarct and is partially dependent on location of the clot. If blocking the flow of blood within the superior M3 and M4 vessels, the embolic clot causes patients to struggle to swallow, lose muscle control in the face and lose all sensation in the face and fingers. This occurs as these arteries perfuse the lower portions of the brain's motor and somatic sensory cortex. A loss of visual attention and eye movement abnormalities may be seen as the terminal branches of the MCA supply blood to the brain's frontal eye fields. Located within the left frontal lobe is Broca's area, whose function relates to the production of speech. Patients suffering from a superior infarct will experience a loss of articulation and slow communication. Contrasting is an inferior M3-M4 infarct in which the emboli would cause the patient to suffer from contralateral visual field defects. Wernicke's area is the region of the brain that's critical for language development found on the left temporal lobe. Loss of blood perfusion to this area leads to patients often communicating fluent but meaningless words. Damage to the inferior parietal lobule may also occur, which can leave patients unable to interpret emotions, 
and prevent normal visuospatial processing. Ischemic strokes require immediate treatment to remove the blockage and promote brain tissue reperfusion, thereby minimizing permanent brain damage. The area of the brain directly hypoperfused by the obstructed artery is known as the ischemic core. This tissue dies within minutes of oxygen deprivation and the extent of damage begins to progress to adjacent areas of the brain. Upon quick treatment, the damage to the surrounding region, known as the penumbra, is reversible. To ensure the correct treatment is provided, a CT perfusion scan is performed on the patient to determine the cause of the stroke. While CT perfusion scans can be rapidly performed, they have limitations in detecting the extent of ischemic induced damage. MRI scans have proven to effectively overcome this issue, however each scan can take over an hour to execute, which significantly increases the risk of greater brain damage. Currently, there are two standards of treatment for ischemic strokes. The administration of a clot-dissolving drug known as a thrombolytic, or the mechanical removal of the clot known as a thrombectomy. While the first line of treatment is generally the administration of a thrombolytic, this drug must be given to the patient within four and a half hours of symptom onset, otherwise it threatens to excel stroke damage by inducing brain bleeding. Thrombectomies, on the other hand, are only more effective in the removal of larger clots found in the larger proximal arteries. Survivors of strokes can suffer from mental and or physical disabilities, with the severity dependent on the area of the brain affected and time to effective treatment. Making small lifestyle changes, such as exercising frequently, reducing alcohol consumption and eating a balanced diet will help lower the risk of suffering a stroke. These alterations may reduce the risk of developing atherosclerotic plaques that would otherwise have the potential to rupture and occlude blood flow to the brain.